Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is our second podcast of the day and today we're joined by Mrs. Rachel Crossland who is a teacher at the PE department and also head of the house teams. So let's go and find out what that consists of. Nice to see you Miss Crossland, how are you? I'm very well, good to see you too Chloe, thank you for having me. Good. What is the role of the colour house teams at BS? Um, well, I think it's an essential part of the school's pastoral system, really. Um, most schools have a really thriving house system, which is designed to really get the kids to connect with each other in a way that they normally wouldn't. Uh, most schools are organised by age, so year groups are together, key stages are together, but a vertical house system allows people to mix from all sorts of different environments and areas and ages and allows a real authentic kind of whole school vertical organisation which wouldn't normally happen. Mm. It's great to create identity um, and collaboration between kids and staff and the wider community. Mm. And what are their house teams essentially? They're divided into four colours, is it? Yep, so we've kind of relaunched the house system this year um, and there are four colours. Uh, so we have which are also associated with an animal and the animals of the house mascots so there are blue sharks go sharks um, <laughs> green cobras uh, red tigers and yellow leopards mm -hmm. and the mascot and the color just gives something for kids to cling on to and to feel an identity with really mm. but that is separate from our sea eagles which is our official school mascot yeah absolutely it? yeah um, we have something internal that the kids belong to and it's a another way of them meeting and having some sort of identity and collaboration. It's like a community within the community. Mm, I see. So what inspired you to become the house team coordinator? Yeah, well, it's, it's a role I've done in previous schools and I've really enjoyed it. Um, and I think there's two, two things that make this job a bit of a dream job, really. The first one is that it allows me or to, to work with students when they're really leading it and running the show and it allows me to facilitate that and empower and upskill kids which is really important mm -hmm. but also it's the fun factor for me we're able to do stuff within the house structure that we don't usually do in classrooms or in normal lessons so it's all the fun stuff that we can get into the program which the kids really respond to as do the staff and it's the fun stuff that makes it the fun stuff that makes it really exciting really mm. and moving into your time at the uh, PE department, you've introduced the mantra, would you say, head, heart and hands. Mm. Could you briefly describe what that's all about? Yeah, well, head, heart and hands is really um, a pedagogy around teaching children and around children developing, really. Um, and it's very simply to do with the physical, it's to do with the cognitive and it's to do with the socio-affective. So in very, very simple terms, it's to do with knowledge, that's head, it's to do with um, relationships, which is heart, and it's to do with your physical ability to move within different environments, which is hands. And those three elements are really, really important in a child's growth through school, not only socially, but also physically and emotionally. And it's mm. those three things that we're really, really trying to focus on when we deliver PE lessons, but also the house system is a fantastic vehicle to promote those three pedagogies. Um, and we do it very, very discreetly. It's, we don't teach it, it just happens by the way that we follow through on house events and by the way that we interact with the children involved with leading house events and the children involved in house events. In very simple terms, I'll explain it in the way that we explain it to the uh, reception children, and that is no show, and glow. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to cultivate in the kids. Mm. So you're equally applying it to the house teams as well as the PE department? Yeah, we are. Uh -huh. And where did you come up with this mantra? Well, it's really not mine, I have to say. It's something that um, most good schools include within their pastoral system. It's very much uh, part of the pedagogy of most good schools and certainly in most PE departments there has become there has been a bit of a shift away from physical prowess and the ability to do things physically very well towards being socially competent, being motivated to move and being confident in all areas. And that really reflects, I think, where society is at the moment. We're trying to breed mm -hmm. children and hook children into movement. And we do that by, f by making it fun, by making it sociable, by showing kids it's not just about being very, very good at one thing. Mm. So bringing more of an all-roundedness to the subject. 
Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think our aim really is to try and bring the head, heart and hands approach into the house system. But it's, um, we don't teach it. It's just a very discreet drip feed. And we scaffold opportunities for kids to be sociable and to show respect and to think about mm. service and to do things within their houses that cultivate all of those characteristics. Mm. Um, so it's a very subtle um, process that is not, we don't, um, we don't teach it specifically. It's something that we hope is as an impact or an effect of everything we do within the house setup and structure. Mm, so like you said, it's the scaffolding. It's mm. not always, you know, maybe another analogy would be the iceberg. You only see the tip and not what's all under there. Yeah. So it's quite subtle the way you're teaching it. Yeah, mm. that's a great example. I've, I've just done an assembly on the iceberg illusion. Mm. And I think that's absolutely right. All the groundwork and all the, the stuff, the scaffolding and the very careful planning around what we want to elicit in children is the stuff under the water. And mm. the iceberg is when we watch them go and we watch them glow mm. and they show all their skills and social um, qualities and all their character characteristics. Mm. And I think the same can be applied for the colour team, pardon me, the house team events. And because usually those are associated with physical events, like the Golden Mile, perhaps. But there's more to it than that, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, you know, the student team who are in place now, who really are running the whole house system, are very keen to make sure that there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has to be inclusive. And if it's not inclusive, it's not really going to do its job properly, because we have a... Um, we have a responsibility to every child in the school, whether they're three or whether they're 18. It doesn't matter where they're from, what they do, what class they're in. We have a responsibility to include them within this community, within our BISP community. Mm. And the way that we do that is we, is we, we, we pull children in and we, we get them interested. The way we do that is that we have to have a broad offer of activities. And we have eight activities altogether. And I have to read my list because I never remember all the activities. <laughs> um, they are... Art, music, sports, culture, leadership, play, enterprise, and service. So those are the eight mainstays, the eight areas that we want to try and tick off and reflect throughout the whole year. So if, um, if one of the students comes to us and say, hey, I wanna do this, this activity for house, we will all just reference that list and say, is that doing what we need it to do? And is that gonna be a value? And more often than not, it is. Um, but that's our framework, really. That's how we mm. justify what we do. And that's how we ensure that we've got some quality assurance around what we offer the kids. Mm. Have, there any, have there been any recent house team days or events? Yeah, yeah, the, there has. Um, it's, it's an interesting year, really, because the house captains, and obviously the house system is very, very student-led. It shouldn't really be about me. It should be about the kids that are in, um, organising things. So they've been transitioning in over the last term, um, and we had a fabulous first ever Barn Day. Barn means house in Thai. And that was really a, a day of celebration for students to come in in non-school uniform, wearing their house colour, or something that reflects something about their house. It could be the mascot, it could be something else. And it was a really fantastic day, mm -hmm. visually, we had a few activities on, but visually it was wonderful. You had four-year-olds walking around the primary school, waving at 14-year-olds on the pitch in the secondary school. And the connection was simply because of the colour, that was it. But that connection was so brilliant. And it's not really happened perhaps in that way, in such a visual way before. And it was a true vertical connectivity that that day brought, which was great. The afternoon brought with it a whole secondary school um, range of events across the whole site, mm. ranging from raft building to rounders to um, team games, um, all sorts of different crazy stuff with a massive emphasis on fun. And there was a lot of laughter and there was just a great buzz around the school. And I think that shows in itself why a house system and that vertical organisation and connectivity is really important. Mm. It was a great day. Thank you. Uh, how do we encourage student participation, though, on these days? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one, um, and I think it's a tricky one because a school, particularly like this school, BISP, is so busy, and everybody in this school is committed to so many different things and so very good at so many different things mm -hmm. that we have to be very careful not to overburden people. Um, so I think the key in terms of getting kids is buy-in. We have to get buy-in from everybody. How do we do that? Well, firstly, I think we have to make it something that's available for everybody, so fully inclusive. 
So I'm talking about teachers belonging to a house and children belonging to a house and maintenance staff belonging to a house and the canteen guys belonging to a house and the admin staff so that there is a real collegiate feeling across the whole school. That creates the buzz and that creates the... The, the inclusivity, that's the first really important thing. The next thing is everything we offer has got to be broad, there's got to be something for everyone, otherwise we switch kids off and once you switch kids off it's really sometimes quite hard to get them back in again. Um, so breadth of what we do is really important, mm. but the key word is it's just got to be fun, it's just got to be cool and it's got to be something different, something innovative, something that just really gets kids motivated to come, motivated to talk to each other and motivated to connect. It's about really trying to increase those corridor conversations that we never have, but we can have if we're walking past someone with a blue t-shirt on and we've got a blue t-shirt on. So it's about finding that connectivity. The other really key thing is about student agency. Nobody wants to sit and listen to me. Teachers talk at children all day. And this has got to be a truly authentic student-led um, enterprise almost. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if you, the students, run it and you're empowered and you have decision-making and you have autonomy, that's what one of the biggest secrets is to the success of any pastoral system like a house system in a school. Mm. So you're really putting it forward by means of the students. So you're giving the responsibility to them. Yeah, I mean, it's really important to do that. I mean, the student voice is very important and it's very big in this school. Um, but for me, if we're planning something that's about character building and socialness and connectivity, that's really got to come from you guys because you're the guys we're asking to connect. So that motivation and inspiration and all of those ideas and creativity has really got to come from you. And that's where our student house captain team come in. They're the ones with all the ideas um, and all the motivation and all the energy. Um, it's really about me just lighting the touch paper and then watching it go. <laughs> a teacher in a nutshell, watching them go. Oh. <laughs> it's a rewarding feeling, maybe. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great to be. It's very unusual to be in a school and not be at the front of a class saying, this is what we're doing now. Um, uh, teaching is a very didactic profession. It's very command style. But actually, the beauty of this role is that you do all the legwork underneath in the background and then you kind of watch it happen. And it's a wonderful thing. It really is. It's, a, it's great for people like me to reflect on that and watch that happen and watch the vitality of youth because you guys are pretty good at what you do. Mm. Going back to that um, iceberg, that tip of the iceberg, mm. maybe, you know, we have those like support figures, but at the end of the day, the, the kids are at the top, you know, they're ad ad advertising it and putting it forward to everybody, which helps the inclusivity, right? And yeah, everybody completely. to join in. Completely. And, you know, um, in, in Barn Day, we had a huge face painting operation, which was... Um, really designed to accommodate the primary school children. And I went over for 20 minutes and watched our leaders, great big people with these tiny little people who were just a gog staring at them, just so um, impressed and overawed by them. And they were asking for all sorts of characters to be painted on their faces and arms. And that connection between really big 17, 18 year olds and tiny little four year olds was just a magical thing to see. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we can do that, the more inclusive we are as a school, mm. the more community we build, the more collegiality we have. And I think that's got to be good for everybody, not just the kids, but for us as staff too, I think. Definitely. So these house teams, I keep wanting to say colour teams. Naughty. <laughs> house teams are really bringing us all together as a community, which just is really great. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, there's another, there's the seven, we operate the seven C's. So when the house team came on board this year, we talked about, you know, what is it all about really? What are we doing? Are we just ticking boxes or do we want to be authentically um, aligning and reflecting um, the kind of pastoral system within the school? And we decided that there were the seven C's, which I've also got to look at my list for because I'll forget them. Mm -hmm. um, but the seven C's are really, really simple and they're the kind of key to what we're trying to elicit within the children. Um, collaboration is the key one. We've got to get everybody working together, not just in their classes or their year groups, but up and down, old kids with younger kids. That respect and that patience required to work with people of different ages is really important to encourage. So that's collaboration. Competition, you know, it's really important for many children, a little bit of 
competitiveness is the thing that sparks them and the thing that gets them involved. Mm. So we have to think about healthy competition without going too far with it so that everybody feels included. Uh, the next one is community. You know, we are building four little house communities within one major BISP community. And that community goes, spreads out and ripples into the wider community. So everything that we do has got to make people feel that sense of community and belonging to something. Mm -hmm. um, creativity. It's got to be creative. What we do, it has to be different. It has to be fun. It can't just be seen as the usual thing that we do when we sit down at 10 past nine for period two. Mm -hmm. uh, culture. Our setting is very, very global, as you know. We're in a very diverse school um, and we're in Thailand. You know, we have to be very, very respectful of our culture and we have to try to bring the culture outside in in yeah. some way. And I think that's really important for us as teachers. For me, I'm, I'm new into to Thailand. I've only been here for two years and I'm still learning lots about the culture and how we embed that culture into this kind of global school environment is really important. Yeah. Um, and the last one is compassion. And this is something that... Uh, the team and I are working towards for this year and next. Compassion is a really important characteristic, which we talk about a lot, but it's harder to evoke it sometimes. And it's harder to set up situations where children are having to show compassion. And that's where we're very, very keen to set up more service activities and more house directed service activities. So we're coming together in our houses, but we're not thinking about what can we win and what can we get? We're thinking about how can our community work together to impact others, giving, supporting, uh, counselling, whatever it is that provides a service to other people. That's where compassion is really important. And that's a big focus of ours moving forwards for the next 12 months or so. Mm. And going back to your first list of activities, I think there was arts on there, mm. a few other that you named. Are there any in particularly that you value that will really help nurture those seven C's that you mentioned before? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to, to pick one over another because every activity that we do from every one of those areas is really important in its own right. And it's also really important because there are certain kids in the school that will relate to that activity. So I don't think any one has more value over another. Um, but I think what I would say is that the thing that I value is the buzz that is created as a result of participation in an event like Barn Day or Tug of War that's just happened. There is just this audible and tangible buzz. And I can't describe it, but I can, I can just tell you how it feels. It feels nice, it feels warm, it, feel, it makes me feel happy. And when you look at people's faces and they're all together and they wouldn't normally be, and they have a common purpose and a real identity, it just feels so good. So I think that's what I value. You know, that's what I wish I had when I was at school. And I think that's what we are trying to set up for kids here. So no matter what kind of day they're having, no matter what class they're in or what experience they're having at any one moment, they can turn to their house captains, they can turn to their house and they know that they have a community there that they can fall back on. Mm -hmm. That takes a long time to create that culture. But I think slowly by getting all of those things right, which the student team are doing brilliantly at, at the moment, mm -hmm. I think we'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. And bringing the focus back to those specific days in the calendar of the school, um, what are the different events that take place? You mentioned Barn Day. Are there any others? Yeah, so, I mean, that's part of the, the new student house captain team's work over the next month or so is to plan the next eight months putting regular uh, house activities in. So we're trying to work a system where we have go uh, platinum, gold, silver and bronze. And those are kind of levels or sizes of events. So Barn Day would be platinum. It's a great day. It's a whole school day. It's very high profile. We have sports day, which unfortunately has, has been COVID affected over the last two years. Mm -hmm. That would be a gold level event. Um, what else do we have? We have the golden mile, which hopefully, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but um, it's going to have a slightly different um, it's a slightly different format next year and hopefully that will reflect the house system and some of our needs in terms of service and in terms of inclusivity uh, more to follow I hope I won't get into trouble for saying that mm -hmm. um, uh, swim galas 
Uh, what else do we do? The departments run all sorts of events, academic events, maths events, leadership events, and we, we, we pony up with departments and we bring them into the house calendar and we assign house points and we give that a house feel to, to increase that buy-in into academic stuff and into classroom stuff, which is really important. Um, we've got some things in the cooking pot at the moment. We're in discussion with the art department mm -hmm. and I have a feeling that's going to be something quite exciting coming up. We're in discussions with the music department. There's mm -hmm. definitely going to be some singing at some point coming up. Um, the house captains are very keen to up the profile of the house system on a daily basis. So there are conversations around allocating house points um, in alignment with commendations, for example. There's discussions about how we can uh, reward or celebrate or acknowledge successful houses on a biannual basis. That could come in the form of, I don't know, pool parties. So we're, we're trying to think about new and innovative events that will get that buy-in and get that community feeling even stronger within the kids at the school. Mm. Don't want to give away too many secrets, obviously. It's top secret stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> this doesn't get seen by anybody, does it? It's just you and me, right? Uh, oh, oh God, I wonder, uh -oh. there's cameras here. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, back to professional mode. For our last question, what do you hope to bring to the BISP house teams? In conclusion, um, bit of a bizarre answer to this question. I think I don't. Re I don't really want to bring very much, um, because I, I don't see my role as being. It shouldn't really be a very public role. So, really and truly, the house captain should be here talking to you, and, mm. and I apologise to them. Um, but I don't want to be at the forefront of it. What I bring, I hope, is a bit of an organisational brain in the background, mm. um, some scaffolding in the background underneath that iceberg that allows people to climb up, that empowers student voice and student leadership and gives them the skills to, to get out in front of other people and start talking and articulating their thoughts. Um, I bring an enthusiasm and an energy, I hope, but I really want that to be kind of under the table. Um, I'm very keen on a bottom-up um, sort of model. So in other words, being underneath the radar um, it happens from the bottom and it just goes up and up and up and the people at the top are the student leaders and the kids in the school that's where all the bubbling and all the fun should be but it's really about me at the bottom spinning the plates and keep keep on lighting the touch paper and make sure that there's enough energy and resources and organization for it all just to happen and ideally this job would be redundant in a couple of years time because it would be completely self-managed by the students mm. that would be the dream I think Mm, well, great initiative anyway. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Mrs. Crossland. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. It's been mm. good to talk. So everyone, we learnt today more about what the house teams consist of, and that really is bringing the school together and making it more integrated. I think next year we've got a lot to look forward to in terms of the house events, which are going to cover so many more areas in the school. So here's to that and let's see what happens. Until the next time. Bye everyone.